Hey everybody, Scott here. Now I just wanted to take a time out from streaming just to talk about a game that's near and dear to me, and actually one of my favorite games of all time, and the first game I ever played in my life. The original Ninja Gaiden for the NES. get into it. The year? 1988. The Nintendo Entertainment System has successfully saved the home market for video games ever since the fateful nosedive the industry took thanks to Atari. Great games came out that year. We had Contra finally coming out for home consoles, a game that needs no introduction. It was fast, smooth, hard as hell. It was a game that after you played it, it caused massive beard and chest hair growth, regardless of your gender or age. It was quite the game. Other big releases that year were Dragon Warrior 3, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, and Japan even got Super Mario Bros. 3. The United States wasn't that lucky that year, however, we got a reskinned Doki Doki Panic that masqueraded around as Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, the game introduced us to, uh, fan favorite Birdo. Yeah, Birdo. Now, even with the Final Fantasies, uh, the Dragon Warriors, and other RPGs coming out with fantastic stories, video games felt like they couldn't move on from trying to be an arcade at home. Now, this wasn't a bad thing, but how could home consoles elevate different genres of games and get storytelling like a movie action with combined with action as fast and crisp as Contra without feeling like a quarter munching disappointment or that I will now call a birdo. Now enter Ninja Gaiden. I won't talk about the generic yet still fun beat em up released under the same name. Uh, that game is primarily known for its gruesome continue screen. I'm talking about the first game in the series, a game that showed us all that no matter the fact that it was an action platformer or that it was a video game, that compelling stories could still be told, that reasons for fighting other than a high score can motivate you to go further, and a video game ending can be more than a simple the end or game over. Now, Ninja Gaiden came onto the scene with just as fast and hard-hitting gameplay as Contra, with a surprisingly deep story for the time. Instead of a high score providing us with a sense of accomplishment, we got shiny new cutscenes at the end of every level to further the story along. The thought Tecmo had was that home consoles had an advantage over arcades. You could make your game longer, you could tell a deeper, more compelling story at home than you ever could in an arcade. Tecmo believed in this so much that they actually trademarked the use of cutscenes and called them cinema screens. Ninja Gaiden did phenomenally. It ended up being one of the top selling games of 1989, and it won Game of the Year and Best Ending from Electronic Gaming Monthly. It was ranked the number two best game of the year, right behind Mega Man 2, which was considered one of the greatest games of all time. EGM even stated that the game's climax was even better than some movies. An action platformer released in the late 80s in a genre that's best ending to date was a guy who looked like Stallone and Schwarzenegger flying off in a helicopter, or a medium whose greatest game at the time, probably Le Legend of Zelda, was. Thanks, their ending was, thanks Link, you're the hero of Hyrule, and a credit crawl. Now, I truly believe that we as gamers owe a huge thanks to Ninja Gaiden for believing that players wanted more from our games, that telling us a little bit of a story a little more complicated than save princess or kill aliens was something that we wanted. I truly believe that Ninja Gaiden broke down the barrier of games being for children. Its story was surprisingly adult. It had th 
occult themes, um, re revenge themes. It had espionage. Uh, Ryu Hayabusa is a modern day ninja, and he worked for the freaking CIA. His dad was possessed by a cult leader, and he had to fight a literal demon at the end. Uh, talk about a wacky story that's definitely not for kids. Now, looking back on it, the story's actually pretty simple, it's cheesy, and honestly not that great. But for the time, it freaking changed um, video games and provided something that we still feel today. Without Ninja Gaiden giving us those cutscenes, we might have some of our action games today. We wouldn't have the play on Greek Mythos that is the God of War series. Dante's Inferno probably would never have been adapted as an action game. Honestly, um, we might not even know that you don't fuck with the witch. Now, I think we all owe Ninja Gaiden just a word of thanks for having the balls to, to go against the grain and show the industry that players want a story. I mean, I for one am thankful for Ninja Gaiden. I hope you guys are too.